In this video, you will learn the side effects of morphine and morphine's mechanism of action. This is a super simple way to learn pharmacology faster and easier in nursing school. So don't worry, my friend, you don't need to figure everything out alone anymore for nursing school. We're here to help you every step of the way. And if you need more help with learning pharmacology in nursing school, be sure to download this free pharmacology cheat sheet that we have for you that walks you through how to learn pharmacology step by step. Now the link is down below in the description for you to get that. Now hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell and let's dive in. All right, let's get started with morphine. Now the generic name is morphine and the trade names are Astromorph PF, Duramorph PF, Embeta, Infumorph, Cadian, and Avinza. The pharmacologic class of morphine is an opioid agonist and the therapeutic class is an opioid analgesic. Now morphine is used to manage severe pain as well as chronic pain. The mechanism of action of morphine is that it binds to the opioid receptors in the central nervous system, causing the central nervous system to become depressed. That depression leads to less sensation and neurotransmitters, transmitting pain to the body and a decreased perception of pain. Morphine also releases histamine throughout the body. Morphine's therapeutic effect is pain relief, and it also causes blood vessels to dilate, also known as vasodilation, because of the CNS depression and the general relaxation that occurs from it. The most common side effects of morphine are confusion, sedation, low blood pressure, and constipation. And the number one life-threatening side effect is respiratory depression. All of these effects are due to the CNS depression that morphine causes. This can be easy to remember if you keep in mind one simple generalized rule. Consider that with any medication, it could work a little bit too well. So in this case, the morphine worked too well. We're suppressing the central nervous system, decreasing neuron activity to help decrease the perception of pain. Therefore, if the medication worked too well, we would slow things down a little bit too much and the patient may go into respiratory depression, be sedated, or have hypotension. GI upset, such as constipation, nausea, and vomiting can all happen as well because the central nervous system is slowed down. Picture that when the CNS is slowed down, it slows everything down. So the GI system is slowed down too. Hypotension can also happen because morphine is a vasodilator because of the antihistamine effect it has as well, meaning that it dilates the blood vessels and decreases the blood pressure. So we know that morphine is used to treat pain by causing CNS depression. So you'll want to make sure you assess your patient's vital signs, specifically their respirations, blood pressure, and heart rate. We want to monitor their respiratory status closely before and during treatment to make sure we haven't depressed their CNS a little bit too much. Before you give morphine, you also want to know that the patient's pain level is at a baseline and where we want to get it. You wouldn't give morphine if the patient's pain level is only, say, a 2 out of a 10. So it's super important to assess their pain level first so we have a baseline to go off of and know that we're appropriately treating our patient's pain level. Keep an eye on their mental status and continue assessing their level of consciousness too. So again, make sure to check that your patient is breathing adequately, their heart rate and blood pressure are stable, and that their mental status is typical for them before you give morphine. You'll also need to assess their GI system and monitor for constipation because morphine is going to cause their GI system to slow way, way down. Remember, CNS depression is slowing everything down. For contraindications with morphine, one big thing to remember is that if the patient's respiratory rate is decreasing or is too low, morphine will just drop it down further. So a low respiratory rate is a huge contraindication for morphine. And if the patient is getting other medications that suppress the CNS as well, this can cause even more respiratory depression or unconsciousness. These would be things such as other opiates, benzodiazepines, and alcohol in particular. So if your patient uses alcohol frequently or regularly, or any other medication that causes CNS depression, 
morphine is most not like is most likely not the best drug of choice for them. Since morphine causes vasodilation, which lowers blood pressure, you wouldn't want to give it to your patient if their blood pressure was already low. So hypotension is another contraindication too. You also wouldn't want to use morphine if the patient has a paralytic ileus, which is an obstruction of the bowel. Because like we said before, morphine is a central nervous system depressant and it depresses the intestines, causing everything to stall out. So if your patient has a paralytic ileus and their bowels are already slowed down, morphine's just gonna make this worse. Another action of morphine that we briefly mentioned is that it releases histamine, and histamine plays a huge role in allergic reactions. So when you think histamine, think allergic reaction. Knowing that morphine can release histamine, you also want to know that it shouldn't be used in patients who are having an asthma exacerbation or an allergic reaction because it will just constrict their airway even more. When doing patient education with your patient who's taking morphine, they, you should advise them to lay low when taking morphine, meaning they shouldn't stand up quickly or do too much activity because like we said before, morphine is causing CNS depression and some of the side effects are confusion, dizziness, and low blood pressure. We don't want our patients to fall or get injured, so safety should be a concern with any patients who are taking morphine. To prevent this, have your patient use their colate before they get up so you can assist them out of bed. If morphine is something more long-term for them, they'll need to monitor their respiratory rate and blood pressure. You'll also need to advise them not to drink alcohol while taking morphine and to stay hydrated to reduce constipation. This will also help prevent low blood pressure as well. Remember, morphine is going to bind to the opiate receptors in the central nervous system, causing CNS depression. This CNS depression is going to cause everything to slow down. Be sure to monitor your patient's respiratory status closely, as well as thorough and frequent pain assessments. Now, if you want to deep dive into the other medications that you'll need to learn in nursing school, don't miss the medication database that we have for you inside the Nursing SOS Membership Community. If you are frustrated because you have to figure everything out yourself in nursing school, don't worry. We will teach you everything that you need to know step by step so you can learn it faster and easier in nursing school. Now the link is down below for you to check out all of the details. Now be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with a friend and check out the videos right over here so you can keep rocking nursing school and go become the nurse that God created only you to be. And I'll catch you in the next video. Take care, friend. Bye-bye.